want to get straight to that breaking news off the top. It's happening in Nixa tonight. Live look right here on your screen at the scene at Lola's Patisserie and Eatery. It looks like crews apparently are getting a handle on the flames there at this hour. Fire crews have been there for about an hour now. We don't know what started that fire or if anyone was injured. Crews are closing down the road near the restaurant that's North 4th Street at Missouri Highway 14. At one point, there were some pretty impressive flames there again at Lola's Patisserie and Eatery. You can Stay up to date on this developing story with our Color 10 News app. Get that right on your smartphone. And new at 10 tonight, an ongoing trial on Missouri's voter identification law is expected to be decided soon. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Abreu. Good to have you along here at 10 again. I'm David Oliver. Color 10's Madison Heaver has more now on what's happening with this ongoing trial. Madison? David, the trial began last week. The NAACP, Missouri's ACLU, and the League of Women Voters of Missouri have teamed up against the state, saying Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft did not provide enough money to properly educate voters of the changes in Missouri's voter ID law. Joan Gentry is with the League of Women Voters of Missouri. It's part of the lawsuit challenging Missouri's voter ID law. Did not educate people enough and did not provide the amount of funding necessary to do um, that a quality kind of education. Missouri's voter ID law went into effect in 2017. It originally required voters without a valid photo ID to sign a sworn statement and provide another form of identification to cast a regular ballot. But recent court filings have blocked some of the law by taking out the requirement to sign an affidavit and instead also offers the option to cast a provisional ballot. That's when there are some questions about a voter's eligibility that must be answered before the vote can count. The League of Women Voters feels that a photo ID is an, an unnecessary form of identification for voters. We're vetted when we, you know, register to vote. We get our voter ID cards then. It's too difficult for People, particularly if you're elderly, if you're poor, if you're a minority, if you're a student, it's difficult to obtain that photo voter ID if you're not a driver. And for some people, you know, who work two or three jobs a week, voting then is put on a low priority in terms of getting that ID. Attorneys for the state say Ashcroft's 18-month informational campaign easily surpassed the minimum requirement of education. Their definition of more than adequately is probably different than ours. In the court filing, state attorneys said Ashcroft visited every county in the state, aired over 100,000 TV and radio ads statewide, published notices in newspapers in each county, ran millions of online ads through social media, and sent thousands of mailers to voters. I think the league's position is primarily it's an unnecessary burden that's being placed on people regardless of the level of education. Gentry said, in, said a decision was supposed to be made last Friday, but that hasn't happened yet. It's in a county court right now, but the decision could also be appealed to a higher court. Secretary Ashcroft's office says it will not be commenting on the trial until a decision is made. All right, thanks, Madison. Well, in political coverage tonight, the fate of a new abortion law in Missouri that would ban abortions after eight weeks of pregnancy will soon be determined. That's right. Reps for Planned Parenthood and the ACLU appeared in court today to argue for a temporary restraining order to keep that law from going into effect. I'm grateful for uh, the court listening to our arguments today, and Planned Parenthood will stand with those individuals no matter what help happens in this ruling. U.S. District Judge Howard Sachs will issue a ruling on the law tomorrow. The judge told attorneys he already had the draft written before the hearing. It is unclear if the judge will change his draft after attending the hearing. Dr. Colleen McNicholas was one of the women in the courtroom today for Planned Parenthood. It's really unfortunate that the courts have been asked again to step in to protect Missourians' rights to bodily autonomy. Well, I truly believe that abortion should be a decision between a patient and their physician. Abortion is health care. And if there are no, if the health care organizations and physicians can't stand in support of that, Correct. I'm not sure who should. If the restraining order is denied, the law will take effect on Wednesday. It would also ban abortions based on race, sex, or a diagnosis that shows potential for Down syndrome. And Missouri's attorney general is now taking a side tonight in an illegal fight regarding discrimination in the LGBTQ community. 
AG Eric Schmidt signed with other GOP attorneys general a U.S. Supreme Court brief saying that federal law does not protect LGBTQ people from discrimination. They say that when the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed, sex discrimination did not include transgender people. While the brief does not say whether Congress should change that, Schmidt, Schmidt says everyone should be treated with dignity under the law. The cases are scheduled to be heard by the high court coming up in October. Keeping crime in focus tonight, a suspect has been charged in a Springfield homicide that happened last week. The news leader reports that a 15 year old suspect was charged today in the stabbing death of 43 year old Craig Dorser. Few details have been released about what happened. Police have said Dorser was stabbed during a disturbance on West Walnut Street last Wednesday. The suspect was arrested at the same time that night. A hearing has been scheduled for tomorrow. We are continuing now at 10, a Color 10 News investigation tonight. You know, endometriosis is one of the leading causes of infertility. It's a female reproductive condition that affects about 7 million women here in the U.S. Due to the range in symptoms, it could take years to get the right diagnosis. Often, women don't know that they have it until they try to start a family. And that was the case for one Springfield woman, Heather Lewis. Has her story for us. When tonight. my husband and I got married, building a family was definitely in our future, and that's one of the things that really helped connect us. After more than a year of trying to get pregnant, Ashley Cousins and her husband Derek knew something wasn't right. In my experience, three weeks out of the four in the month, I was not feeling well at all. Her doctor suspected something too. Ashley was referred to a reproductive endocrinologist in St. Louis, where she received a diagnosis of endometriosis. One of the most common symptoms is severe pain during the menstrual cycle. Endometriosis is when the cells that are normally on the inside of the uterus, the lining, uh, somehow escapes the uterus and it begins to grow implants on and around the other organs of the body, um, on the abdominal wall. <clears throat> it does also create scar tissue and adhesions, which can distort pelvic anatomy. Um, there's a lot that's unknown about endometriosis and how exactly it prevents fertility. Researchers are also still working to understand how the process happens. As far as treatment goes, there is no cure. But there is a way to reduce the symptoms. Ashley has now undergone three surgeries to do so and to prep her body for in vitro fertilization. We did pursue the course of IVF. Uh, reason being is because, you know, I was ovulating every month. My hormone levels checked out perfectly. There's no clear signs of anatomy distortion to the point where it wouldn't support a pregnancy. According to Dr. Mary Duff with the Farrell Duncan Clinic in Springfield, every couple is different. The goal is not to jump straight to in vitro. Um, and so each couple really needs to be evaluated. That's a process you can start at home. And things you need to be paying attention to are your menstrual cycles regular, and you can easily purchase and, and take an ovulation predictor kit over the counter to make sure that you are ovulating when you think you're ovulating. In Ashley's case, after being diagnosed with endometriosis, her doctor recommended IVF. When I heard my, endo, my reproductive endocrinologist say we should move forward to IVF, my heart sank. I had heard stories of them the cycles costing thousands of dollars and people just choosing to go a different path and that's what I was prepared to do. Women we spoke with say in vitro fertilization cost them thousands of dollars, especially when you add up the cost of medications, traveling to specialists and lost wages. A bright side, Ashley's insurance covered it. She's undergone two IVF cycles so far, but neither was successful. I wouldn't have done IVF cycles, much less two of them, if we didn't have the type of coverage that we did have. Arkansas is one of 15 states that has passed a law mandating coverage for infertility. But there are loopholes that exempt self-insured companies from providing the benefit. In Missouri, fertility coverage is not mandated, so employers determine if they want to provide that coverage. A lot of people take out second mortgages. Uh, I pulled a 401k loan to pay for some of these things. Although the IVF cycles that we've had have not been successful in the sense of bringing home a child, I have found them to be successful in the sense that I've learned a lot about my body. I've built strong networks with healthcare providers around the state. Um, and I have found a sense of identity 
that is aside from infertility and becoming a parent. In Springfield, Heather Lewis, Ozarks First. By the way, folks, Ashley tells us she plans to go back to IVF again later this year using what she's learned to hopefully improve her chances. Ashley also helps lead an infertility support group locally, and that's how she met Amanda. Coming up tomorrow, hear about her journey involving embryo adoption. Turning to weather coverage now, we've still got some storms moving through the Ozarks right now, Beth. Yeah, right now we've got storms north of I-44 that are continuing to push to the south and east and will continue to strengthen through the next couple of hours. We've still got a severe threat for the rest of this evening and into the overnight hours. We'll do timing. We'll talk about severe weather. We'll talk about modes of severe weather and we'll talk about a cool down and more sunshine coming our way in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere.